We're putting cork on it in today's video. <laughs> hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I am, uh, I just want to put together a quick video for you guys today showing some of the tips and techniques that I use when I'm laying cork road bed down on my model railroad. Um, cork road bed is, uh, a, a, it's a very common um, uh, type of road bed material that a lot of people use. Uh, it's worked great for me for, I don't know, 20 years, 25 years now. Every single model railroad I've ever built I've used cork road bed on. Not only does it do a good job of uh, deadening the sound of the trains, but it makes for a really good base for all the ballasting and stuff that you do later on. Uh, on the model railroad. So um, there's a lot of videos out there with people showing off how to how to do a cork road bed. I'm going to show you the technique I use and a couple of quick tips uh, just to uh, ensure that you're getting really good looking uh, results from your work. So let's get right into it right now. Well as you can see I've already got uh, a, a lot of it laid down here but I do have one section here that I, I need to start working with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and begin laying down cork here. And the, the tools I use are really, really simple. I just have some wood glue uh, and some push pins, and that's it. Um, wood glue, I think, is a really great um, adhesive material to use for uh, cork because you're, doing, you know, you're taking basically wood and wood and, and putting them together. And um, so I think it's, it's pretty great for that. I lay down a nice bead of wood glue. I'm not um, stingy with it either. Uh, when I when I lay down the wood glue I, I mean business when I do it. Um, so I'm going through and I'm kind of going on both sides of the uh, center line that I've drawn on the pencil here and I'm just laying down a bead of wood glue. And one thing I'm doing, this is laying down uh, straight or you know sections of cork on on just like a single you know piece of track that's winding through the woods that's easy enough it gets a little tricky when you get into areas where switches kind of diverge from each other I've seen people lay cork you know along the straight section and then come back uh, separately later on and then attach another piece going this direction here and what you end up doing is you end up getting a little bit of a gap and you don't get a really nice flow uh, in your turnouts and so I like to get that nice flow so we're going to actually lay down the track so it separates out into or I'm sorry lay down the cork as so it separates out into a V as we go here so we've laid down the glue and now we put in the cork and what I do is if you take a look at uh, the cork here you're going to get when you split it in half you're going to get one section that's going to kind of have like a little rough edge to it and then you're going to have one suction that gets a little bit of a smoother, nicer edge. I always end up putting the rough edge away from uh, on the back side of the viewing angle um, for the track. We're going to go back and sand it so that it looks nicer. But uh, um, as we start out, um, I, I like to keep that sort of on, on the opposite side. It just makes things a little bit, a little bit easy. It looks a little bit uh, nicer, I think, to keep the, the nicer, cleaner edge on the front side of things. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to go ahead and lay it on top of the glue. And try not to get too messy as I'm laying it down. Go ahead and grab a push pin. And then just start to start to lay it in there and follow my center line as it begins to diverge. And you don't have to be perfect here. Just get it close. It doesn't have to match your center lines perfectly. You may not have even drawn them perfectly to begin with. So get it looking nice and get it flowing good. Then you can always come back later on when you get to your track. And make sure your track is laid nicely on top of it. All right, I end up putting in a lot of pins. Uh, I don't want, you know, bumps where it kind of raises up off the glue and dries that way. 
and then goes flat where I've got the pins in place. I also put the pins in at a bit of an angle. I don't know if that helps or hurts, but that's what I do. You don't need to press them all the way in. It does a pretty good job of holding it, especially when you put them in at an angle. Okay. So that is one piece. Let's come back here. Now this back piece here is a little different because it's got to go in this section here. And we've got, as you can see, this uh, part of the track here already sort of diverging off. So what I need to do is grab my X-Acto knife. And I've got to basically cut an angle into this cork. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's do it right here. And I just eyeball it. I don't need to measure. Just eyeball it. You're going to get pretty close if you do it that way. Yep, that looks good. Let me get a little more glue in this area here. Because I didn't get quite enough right in here. You can see I use a lot of it. That's all right. I don't know if it has any effect to the sound deadening qualities if you kind of really soak it in wood glue. I haven't noticed anything yet. All right, and go ahead and press that down nicely. Just like that. And follow your center line. All the way down. And you can see I'm starting, I've got another turnout that's separating here. So that's going to split off here. Um, but this one is now filled in nicely. You can see there is a gap here. So what I'm going to do with that is just filling that gap with a little piece of cork. You don't need to be super precise with any of this because Mm, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and call that good. Stick some glue in the center there. That may be too much glue. <laughs> that's a river of glue there, guys. All right. You're going to get a little messy doing this. There's no way around it. It's model railroading. You're going to get messy sometimes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wipe down some of this excess glue from the edges. Let that dry, you won't even see it. You're not going to need to uh, be super precise with anything that goes on here because um, we're going to sand it down nice and fly to make it look good. But once you put track down, all that is kind of hidden by the track itself and the frog details and everything anyway. So Precision is not a necessity when it comes to the inside. What you do end up doing though is you end up getting nice flowing outside uh, angles on your turnouts, on your where your turnouts go. Here you can see an area where I've got a curved turnout, and these turnouts are very long, but um, having this cork kind of separate out into a V and then filling in in betweens with some sliced down sections here. It makes for a very smooth transition uh, into uh, the, the turnout. And anywhere here where it looks a little funky uh, as we lay the turnout down in there, uh, in its position, all that kind of goes away and gets hidden. So you end up getting a really nice looking um, uh, uh, bed for your uh, for your turnouts, uh, and it uh, ends up looking uh, pretty darn great. Okay, so I've let it dry for uh, about eight hours or so, and now I'm ready to uh, go ahead and pull up the tacks and continue on. Uh, one thing I do is um, I don't want to just yank these these out um, 
uh, and because what I could end up doing is just pulling cork out with it. And uh, you know, if you if you break that um, that that uh, adhesion that the glue makes between the cork and the wood there, uh, that's not good. So I twist the tack and then pull. That twisting kind of just breaks it free of the glue, and then allows you to uh, go ahead and pull those tacks out. So you can go pretty quick doing that. And just like that, get a couple more of these out here. All right, so uh, now that I've got uh, the uh, push pins removed, uh, it's time to go ahead and sand this. You'll feel if you run your hand over top, there's some rough areas, especially like in this area right here where you've added some extra cork and that kind of thing, or seams meat and that kind of thing. And of course we've got that rough edge that we've uh, placed along the back. What I end up using is a, um, I got a Dremel here um, that has a little sanding wheel on it. Um, and I use this for my first pass. You want to be very gentle with this. This can really eat into the cork quickly. So I just kind of use it just for the, the big stuff along the, the edge, just to get that down pretty quickly. So I just really lightly go over the top of it. You can see it starts to take it down pretty quick. You're going to be very careful because it can get away, with you, get away from you pretty quickly if you're not careful with it. Okay. <clears throat> Once I've done that and I kind of got that down, that's looking pretty good at this point. I take a sanding <laughs> block. Essentially, all, all I have is a block of wood wrapped around some sandpaper. And I'm going to go over the top and the sides of, of everything else here. And it doesn't take much, really, just a little bit. And I do both sides of the, uh, of the uh, cork as well. And that immediately gets that much smoother, much nicer. Um, sometimes you got to play with these layers a little bit, but that's looking pretty good at that point. can of compressed air, cleans everything up nicely, and uh, there you go. We're in good shape at this point. Uh, just continue these same steps uh, throughout the rest of your layout, and you will have excellent looking cork road bed.